Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about maintenance and improvements for your open textbook. Now the first thing that is very important is to enjoy the moment when you release your book. It's a really big milestone and you have to take the time to let that set in, enjoy it, promote it, uh, and, and take that moment for yourselves before start thinking about what comes next. Now an open textbook can have a long life with the right care and time put into it from you and the community that builds around the book. The key thing is that there will be a lot of people invested in its success long term and who want to keep it relevant. And putting that time in also keeps it a viable option for others who might want to adopt it in the future as well. Uh, it shows clearly that there is investment and attention paid to the book and that the, the book is developing and, and expanding over time. When we think about maintenance and improvements, we group the kinds of changes you can make into a few different sets. The first of these is maintenance. And that's what we use to refer to the small ongoing changes you can make to the book that are more about the function than the content. This includes things like fixing errors, uh, typos that people come across, things like making sure that links are still going to the correct place. And you might want to spend a little time looking at the different formats that your book is presented in, checking in on them every now and again to make sure that everything's all right. The other piece of this is thinking about how you can find new distribution channels for the book. So it may be that there's a new OER repository that comes along that wasn't there when you released your book. Just taking the time to submit the text there. Those are those maintenance kinds of changes that you can make along the way. Next, we can think about improving existing content. This is often going to be in response to real world feedback that comes in once your book is out and being used in classrooms, although it may also be informed by reviewer feedback that you have had in the back of your mind but haven't had the chance to address yet. And specifically, you'll be getting more input on how the book is working for students. So that can mean something like identifying a specific unit that isn't really resonating with students. Uh, and thinking about how it can be reworked or whether there's something that needs to be changed and how it's presented within the text as a whole. Next, there are additions to the book. And this is adding new content. And that, again, might be something that you have had planned from before release, where you had a certain set of chapters that you wanted to have on the first edition, and then you think about new work that can be added to it over time. Or again, it might be in response to feedback of the book actually being out in the world. This can also be where you're adding more ancillaries, different exercises and case studies, anything that you think will enrich the content along the way. And finally, there are updates to the content. And this is really important to show that the book is staying responsive. And that's also an advantage of OER is that it can be really in touch with the changes that are happening within your discipline and you can be adjusting to them as you go. In addition, it's really important to make sure that things like examples and case studies stay relevant. Uh, that they're going to make sense to students, that they're responding to the world around them. But there's still always room to be thinking about how you can be improving and changing uh, the content in response to changes in the world around it. Now that we've talked about the kinds of changes that you can make to your book over the course of its life, it's important to think about the timing at which you make those changes. Small things like typos and broken links, you can go ahead and do those as you find them. They're not going to disrupt anything, and in fact, they're helpful. When it comes to bigger changes, those can really have an impact on people when they are teaching and using the book in their classes. So it's important to avoid making too many big changes throughout the semester and only make ones that are absolutely necessary. Instead, what you can do is save up the kinds of things that you want to be changing and spend dedicated time on them between semesters and make sure that those releases are happening in such a way that they're not going to be disruptive to classroom use of your book. In addition to the timing of when you make the changes, you can think about what the impact will be on the different formats of the book as well. So the web book is obviously going to be updated immediately. If you're creating other formats from that same site, they can happen fairly quickly as well. But if your book is in print on demand, you're not necessarily going to be wanting to change out that book every time you make these kinds of changes between semesters. And you may want to wait until there is significant enough of evolution of the book to send out a new edition or something similar. So there's a clear step forward in the new copy of the book available in print on demand. Along with timing, it's really important to be tracking the changes that you're making. Not to the level of those typos and broken links, but anything that's a change to content, that's an addition of new content, or an update of something that's in the book already. Those are the kinds of things people will need to know about so they'll understand how those changes might impact their use of the book if they've already adopted it. 
And at the same time, it's a really good indicator to people interested in the book that there is ongoing evolution happening and that they can count on the book staying relevant and expanding over time. When you have made a significant number of changes, this is also a chance for more promotion. Uh, and so you can send it out again through the same channels that you've used previously, hopefully some new ones that have come along in the meantime, and show that you are not only creating a text that is valuable to people, but you are putting in the time with your community to keep it alive. These OER can be living documents in a really exciting way and evolve and adapt over time. In addition, make sure that you are keeping your team up to date with the changes that you're making and keep them involved as well. If they've been teaching with the book, they may have been creating their own uh, changes or, or ancillary materials alongside it that can be brought back into the central text and incorporated over time. It can be a little intimidating for people to think about all this work that can come after you've already put in the work to creating a book, but this is really where the community piece comes into play. There are people who are invested in the success of your book, who want it to stay relevant, who want to keep expanding it, and they are going to be involved in this work too, even if they're doing it on their own. The key thing is making sure that you keep the connections between everybody using the book, who care about it, and so that the work that's happening to evolve it and update it and improve it and add to it, all of these things happen collectively and are shared between the people who want to see this book have an impact in their classrooms.